Hey, Architect Nation, Enix Sears here. And in this short video, we're going to be going over one important key to stand out as an architecture firm. Now, if you're an architecture firm owner and you do good work, but you find that within that framework of doing good work and perhaps you're getting plenty of word of mouth referrals, but oftentimes you find yourself competing against other firms and you find that your clients have difficulty understanding why they should work with you over their competitors. Or perhaps you yourself have difficulty even describing why your services are better than working with someone else, right? This is a very difficult place to be as an architecture firm owner. And if this is your situation, if you identify with this, you're definitely not alone. It's actually part of a larger trend. So over the past 30, 40 years, the competition within the architecture space has definitely increased. And at the same time, Firms and the field of what we do as architects has gotten more and more specialized. So let me try to, I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to pull up a little, see if I can get this on in the frame of our video here. You know, even since I've been practicing architecture since 2002 is when I graduated from school, there has been a decrease in the scope of what architects handle in a project. And there's been an increase in the consultants and other stakeholders that are involved in a project. And this is understandable. As technology moves forward, as the building industry moves forward, it's too much for one person to handle. And so, of course, we bring in sub-consultants, people like security consultants. We bring in low-voltage consultants. There's lighting consultants. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And so, ultimately, what you have in the field of architecture now that continues to happen is you have this increasing specialization. So, you have all these specialists that handle different areas you know, I mean, one of my favorite sub-consultants was, of course, the hardware consultant because he could just quickly go over my all my hardware schedules and tell me which lock sets were right and which ones were wrong. That was amazing, right? So ultimately, though, what happens from our client perspective, this can be a problem because what happens with the specialists within this ecosystem, let's say this is the, the ecosystem that we're talking about here, is that this person over here becomes really focused on lighting. This person, the architect, becomes really, what do they focus on, right? So the architect, a lot of times, if we're working with commercial or institutional projects, I'm not talking about basically anything but single-family residential, the architect is going to be concerned about um, programming, the adjacencies of spaces, kind of the layout of the building, um, the, the look, as people say, the look of the building, the aesthetics, but also how that ties into the architecture as well as life safety, right? And then, of course, the coordination of all the sub-consultants. So this is what the architect is thinking about. So the lighting consultant, of course, is going to be thinking about the lighting. The security consultant over here is going to be thinking about security issues, right? And so the list, the list goes on and on. Structural is thinking about this. Now, what ultimately happens, and this is the mistake I see a lot of architects making, is that they may focus on, let's say, let's say they're in a project or in, in a client. So this big ecosystem right here represents our client. And this big ecosystem actually represents the client's business. So this is what the client does. Now, if you work with homeowners, this will represent the client's life. And so within the, within the client's ecosystem here of their business, what they're trying to do in their business, a lot of times architecture is just a small part. So they may have, they may be doing a project for one particular reason. And so this is almost a fractal, meaning we could take this out, we could blow it up, and then within this, we have a lot of other specialties happening down here, right? And ultimately, what this causes is it causes fragmentation. And then these specialists, because they're focused on what they do best, they lose sight of the whole. They lose sight of what their little input right here, the impact that that has on the rest of the system. Now, let me give you an example from another trader profession so you can hopefully catch the vision of this powerful principle that we're talking about here. So one of my personal frustrations as a business owner has been finding bookkeepers and accountants that actually understand the big picture of my business. A lot of times I found bookkeepers and of course the bookkeepers over here, let's say this is my bookkeeper and this bookkeeper is categories and categorizing transactions. Well, a couple of years ago, I looked at my statements, end of your statements, and I discovered that there was like $200,000 of revenue that had been completely miscategorized, which means that my tax bill was going to be like double uh, what it would normally have been otherwise. This is a huge problem. But see, the bookkeeper didn't even care about that, right? Because the bookkeeper was thinking about their own little silo right here instead of the bigger picture. And so going back to the example of accountants and bookkeepers, you know, when I'm looking for an accountant or bookkeeper, I could care less about, you know, 
transactions, right? That's the bookkeeper's domain. At the end of the day, I care about what those transactions correctly categorizing them does for me. Number one, protecting me from the IRA in case I get the IRS, in case I get audited. And number two, being able to save on taxes, right? This is why, this is the value that a bookkeeper accountant might bring to my business, among others, okay? So ultimately, I have been able to find an accountant, a bookkeeper. Now, from the accountant side, let's say this is my accountant right here. You know, what I'm looking for from an accountant is tax strategies. I want to know, is what is it going to impact me if I put this money from this bank account to this bank account? right? I want my accountant to understand the big picture of where I'm going in my life with my wealth planning, everything involved. All right, so let's bring this back to architecture. So what is this so specialized? We lose the big picture of what our client actually cares about. Well, we end up being irrelevant and we end up looking like all the other architecture firms. So here's the key with today's video. What I'd, I'd ask you a question today and the question is this. Looking at the larger ecosystem of the clients that you serve, what is it that they actually care about and what impact does your piece in the project play on the overall process and ecosystem? If you can figure this out, then you are well on your way to being able to establish and provide real added value to your clients, which will get you out of the commoditization rat race, right? Because if you're, if you're just competing on, hey, look, we do building plans, which is this little specialization, we do our architecture really good, then you're going to continue to find that charging the fees you need to charge is going to be a struggle because there are other firms that are taking a look at this bigger picture and they're going to be winning every single time. Duo and Scott, welcome. Kenny, Paul, and Tom. Right, a bunch of very smart people on the line here. So I look forward to your, your input on this. Now, how does, this, how does this relate to actually getting more of the kind of products you want as an architect? Well, first of all, it's just having the understanding of what your client actually cares about, right? And not being irrelevant. Because if we get it, it seems almost like the more education, the more licenses we get, we kind of depend on those as those are the value that we bring to the project. When in reality, the way that the economy is going, the way that society is going now is more to a merit-based society. I mean, it's probably always been like that, right? Which means that the people, the providers who can deliver the most value are going to find themselves winning out at the end of the day. So that's it for today's video. I'd just like you to consider this one question. As an architect, when you're looking at the services you provide for your clients, what is the impact you're actually having on the bigger picture? All right. I'd love to know your comments down here. Let me see. There was... There, I'm going to give you one example of an architect that really caught this vision and some firms that are doing some cool things to be able to differentiate themselves and it's just paying off fantastically for them. So there's a firm based out of London and the, the, the firm owner in this firm, I think over the course of two or three years, went from three people to a staff of over 40 people working with developers. And what she understood was that, you know, when developers come to her, they're, they're coming at a stage in the project when they don't have a lot of capital to invest, but they do need the value-added services of an architect. And so she decided to partner with them, and she sent, since built a very successful business model. There's another architect I know who's based out of, I think, I think it's in St. Paul. And this architecture, from what they do, is they also work with developers, but they also provide the marketing collateral to actually lease and help sell the project. So that's exactly what I'm talking about here, right? One way to look at it is I'm an architect, I do multifamily, sure I'm gonna maximize the units we can get on this property, I'm gonna make sure that it gets all the entitlements that it needs, yeah, all that stuff is fantastic. But can we actually sell the project? Are we looking at the concerns of our client up here, Mr. Developer, who's competing, you know, what are the market forces that they're competing with, okay? This is when we move from someone who's gonna be caught in the commodity rat race into someone who can ascend and become more of a consultant and a value add. As always, look for your comments, leave your comments below. I'd like to know what you think about these trends. Have you seen this? Have you seen that it's, you know, more and more architecture firms in the market are becoming, you know, making everything look plain vanilla, that clients are having difficulty determining and seeing differentiation between architecture firms? Do you find it for yourself that it's difficult to describe how you're different than your competitors? As always, this is Enoch, hoping you have an amazing day. Carpe diem. Bye for now.